Uh, welcome back. For the first quarter of 2021, the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission tracked $8.4 billion investment with the manufacturing sector as the largest, accounting for about 35% of the total announcement. In the same period last year, the commission tracked $4.81 billion in investment announcement, which shows a material increase over what was tracked last year. What are the drivers of this increase and how can Nigeria build on this? The Executive Secretary of the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission, Ms. Yewande Sadiku, explains this to us from our Abuja studio. Good morning, madam, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Annie. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so when we look at the investment announcements, they are just indicators to actual inflows for the year. So is the actual for the first quarter of 2021 higher or lower than $8.4 billion? And what has been the impact of this figure in reality so far? Um, we won't know the actual for the first quarter of 2021 until the figures are released by NBA, NBC. NBS. Yes. So there's a big difference between investment announcements and actual investments. The investment announcements just give us an indicative sense of investor interest in Nigeria. It tells us whether investors are looking or not looking, what sectors they're looking at, what states they're focused on. The ultimate objective of tracking these investment announcements was to put us in a position to follow through on those investment announcements to support the investors to facilitate the conversion of those announcements to actual investments. All right, we could explain that the increase from last year it could be because of the uh, lockdown uh, measures that disrupted activities, but uh, what drove the manufacturing industry contributing about uh, 35%? Um, so I wouldn't say the lockdown per se, I would say COVID generally, because COVID generally affected um, investment interest across the world. It wasn't just in Nigeria. So the, the investment flows in 2020 fell materially from 2019. Not lockdown, COVID generally is more what I would say. Now in terms of manufacturing, sometimes the announcements are very lumpy. Um, and for this one, one particular announcement represented 3.6 billion out of the total of 8.4 billion. So it was just because of that lumpy announcement relating to um, brass fertilizer. That's what affected the lumpiness. This sector uh, has been shining. I, I mean, it's one of it's a major sector that got us out of recession because it's, it went by 14.70% in the fourth quarter of uh, last year, making it the fastest growing sector of the Nigerian economy in that quarter and the only sector to have grown by double digits. Where is it in this investment announcement? Because it seems it's the manufacturing that is shining in this announcement. So we didn't see any material announcement from the ICT sector in the quarter. What you mentioned in relation to the GDP growth was from, commercial, was from consumer activity, which was driven by COVID. So that sector was in particular a winner in the context of the impact of COVID on the economy. But we didn't see material um, investment activity in that quarter in terms of the investment announcements. So I'm still staying on the ICT now because it's the new normal with COVID and even, well, we can't say post-COVID. Are there not ways to attract investment into that sector? Because it has a lot of potentials. The young people are there. I mean, it's the new way of life, going virtual and all that. Is there no way to attract more attention to that sector? I certainly think that Nigeria will benefit from driving investment interest in that sector. That sector represents one, entrepreneurial energy, one, and, and two, Nigeria's youthful energy. Um, and a lot more engagement between government and private sector. A lot of the development we've seen in the sector, especially at the entrepreneurial end, has come from young Nigerians. They share grit, they share brawn and they share entrepreneurial energy, driving um, innovative activity and using technology as a disruptor, not in one sector, but across all sectors. So when you say ICT, I mean, it's driven education, it's driven logistics, it's driven healthcare, it's driven, so it cuts across sectors. And I foresee a time where technology will not be something that we talk about separately as a sector, because it'll be so ubiquitous in all aspects. 
Certainly, though, we can benefit, as you say, from driving investment interest in that sector. And there have been a number of initiatives aimed at better understanding what it will take to stimulate investor interest. A lot of the investments we've seen now have not really been because of the actions of government. They have happened because of the actions of the investors themselves. It will have been useful to see how much more we can drive it based on the deliberate action of government to enable the development of the sector. But that's still work in progress. Okay, um, how impactful has the government's uh, ease of doing business uh, policy been in attracting uh, an investment? The ease of doing business policies have certainly been useful in reducing the issues that investors have in investing in Nigeria. And certainly the convenience, the ease of the business environment is an important measure that investors um, look at. But there are other issues that we still need to work on to achieve the kind of investment targets that Nigeria has the capacity for. So the, the single window investor portal uh, launch uh, should have happened first quarter. How's that going? I was, I was hoping that you would not ask me that question. Um, we've been at the development stage. Um, we had hoped that we would launch it in the first quarter. From the engagement with the developer that we're working um, with, the expectation now is, is that it will happen at the end of the second quarter. Um, but the, the target that we were all hoping for at NIPC was certainly um, before the end of March. But I, it is something that I can confirm to you is work in progress. I guess the development is taking a lot longer than we had expected, but it is certainly, it is certainly being done. We contracted a company called Charlie Duff, you know, through a competitive selection process. So they're the ones working with NIPC to develop it. All right, so in your book of states for 2020, you show the competitive advantage of each state, including the Federal Capital Territory. From your observation, how much of the potentials which you noted are being explored, at least to an appreciable degree? I think we're still a long way from um, driving investment promotion, leveraging the sectors that we've identified. But you cannot drive investment promotion, deliberate, proactive investment promotion in those sectors until you have first identified them. So what we've done, if you like, is the first step to identify the sectors for each state. What we now need to do is proactive sector-based investment promotion, either on a state-by-state -state basis or on a regional basis. There are nine states in Nigeria, for instance, that are ocean-facing. So if we had investments that were looking at um, aquaculture, especially the kind of aquaculture that likes a mix of um, salt and um, fresh water, those nine states would be useful to push forward or to proactively look for investors in those sectors. We were looking for investors in rice, we were looking for investors by any sector. Um, the Book of States serves as the first layer of the work that we need to do. So it's still work in progress. It's not an end in itself, not by any means. Hmm. So, I mean, when I went through it, it was very rich, and every state in the country has a, a lot of potentials. But we're now faced with the reality of today. We have COVID to deal with. With that, we have the insecurity issue in the country to deal with. How much of this is disrupting the exploration of those potentials? Um... The factors that you have mentioned certainly are disruptive in gathering investments, but they don't necessarily mean that investments will stop. We still need to do our work of proactively, and when I say we, I mean um, government, because I see investment promotion not as tied to one agency, but as an all of government initiative. One agency can act as an advocate, can act as a conduit between investors and government agencies, but you need all of government to be lined up as wanting investors, as sending that message to them, and as proactively working to resolve investors' issues when they arise. So there are a number of issues that have slowed down investments globally. There are certain issues that are domestic to Nigeria, and certainly we need to address the totality or the bulk of all those issues to get the kind of investment numbers, you know, that Nigeria is capable of. All right, let's uh, look at uh, IGR now by states. Uh, the highest contributor was uh, uh, Lagos and rivers and uh, uh, 
FCT. Meanwhile, Yobe, Taraba, and Adamawa each counted for less than 1% of total IGR in uh, 2020. Um, did, how, how do you uh, see these states showing up uh, more revenue at this point? You know, what you've, under, what you've just talked about underscores why we proactively need to increase economic activity in a number of states. Government cannot do it alone because government does not have the capacity to. There's no country that relies on government alone. And the Nigerian economy has been private sector led anyway. What the Book of States showed us is that there isn't a single state in Nigeria that does not have interesting prospects for investors. And one of the things we would like to do um, at NIPC, and the reason we worked on the Book of States within Nigeria Governors Forum, is that we would like to proactively work with the governors to drive investor activity to each of the states. But it needs to be proactively and deliberately done. Um, and I always say that investors don't listen to, you know, to what we say. Investors look at what we do. So by our actions, we need to be completely suggestive of the fact that we want investors to come to Nigeria. We want investors who come to Nigeria to be happy with Nigeria and to act for us as advocates to get others to come in. You talked about actions. What are those immediate actions you think the government can take? Maybe first three steps to assure investors that, oh, these guys are serious, we can actually go here. What are some of those, like three or five of them? I don't think we have enough time to run through <laughs> um, the things that in investors would like to see. <laughs> to run through the things that investors would like to see. Um, but if I can just start with the, the things that come you know, to, to the top of mind. There's still challenges with raw materials coming in for companies to manufacture in Nigeria. It affects all investors, or it affects a large number of investors, not just foreign investors. It affects domestic investors as well. There are still challenges with FX, which all of us are aware of, you know, that affects investors' ability um, to procure items that they need for you know, their manufacturing activity. We've talked about security. Um, but in terms of what else government can do, investors still talk about you know, the policy-making process and how they would like a more predictable um, you know, policy-making process. But the totality of what I think that we need to do, I would sum up as shoring up investors' confidence in investing in Nigeria. You know, it's, it's something that whatever that confidence means, we all need to more actively do to try to get investors across the board. Well said, ma'am. Uh, confidence is actually what we need to give them. Thank you so much uh, for your time on Business Morning today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.